Well, I think it's safe to say that barbarians are breaking the game. You've probably seen a few of these builds popping off lately. But have you seen one that is also face tanking everything, including the equivalent of a tier 200 pit, which is the hardest hitting content in the game, and the new uber bosses? Just check this out. I'd also like you to know that the pit doesn't scale damage higher than this. So this is actually the hardest hitting content to ever exist in Diablo 4. And we're face tanking that shit. Yeah, a pretty balanced build. Absolutely perfect for when you're fighting Uber Lilith, for example, and you're having a seizure, not being able to find the middle of the ring for a few minutes. And what about the damage? Yeah, it looks pretty fine. Funnily enough, though, I would quadruple this damage instantly if I could find these tempering manuals. The gear is also pretty shit, and it doesn't use any uber uniques, of course. Let's check out how it works, because you're probably real eager to start up the PTR and start blasting. Or perhaps you're just in need of some new spank bank material. Either way, Paragaming is here to guide you through it. First, let's chat a bit about the Dust Devils, aka a, the new fun thing getting absolutely dumpstered next balance update. These beauties were absolute dog shit before season four. That's due to them not scaling via weapon damage, but they are now, as should all flat damage aspects. And that is fucking sick. To spawn them, we're rocking three key aspects. First, we have the Windlasher aspect, by using this, our double swing is spawning three Dust Devils every cast. But we can do even better. By also grabbing the Twin Strikes unique, we are granted two extra double swings every fourth attack. Now the other two, both are really goddamn interesting. Devilish Aspect spawns Dust Devils every hundred fury we generate. Now this is not as simple as it looks though. Some ways to generate fury, such as Fury per second doesn't work at all. So that fucking sucks. The absolute main ways of generating Fury is instead via Fury on kill, as well as via the weapon's mastery node and the skill tree. By stacking these, along with resource generation, nasty things happen. Like this, for example. Or this. Or the ops, wrong one. Yeah, that's the correct one. And lastly, we have the Fierce Winds Aspect. Every time we shout, we get five Dust Devils, which is pretty sick, but the other part is nasty as hell. By increasing the size of our Dust Devils, it deals more damage. So just imagine once the Tempered Affixes can drop, and I would be able to both double the amounts of Dust Devils and double their damage. Yeah, they'll definitely drop for me. I absolutely haven't tried to farm them for like 40 hours. It's gonna drop soon, right guys? Okay, so what about the busted defense then? Well, firstly, I'm rocking 75,000 health with Elixir up. Challenging Shout can boost this an extra 20%, so that's pretty busted. What really takes the defense to the next level, however, is all the extra points of damage reduction we're stacking. When combining these three aspects, we get above 90% damage reduction and damage reduction is extremely hard to find in Season 4. So being able to stack this much as a Barbarian is absolutely bonkers. Just don't show this to any Source enjoyers, they'll cry their eyeballs out. But what really takes this build to new levels, however, is this new aspect, Concussive Strikes. Since we're getting unlimited amounts of Dust Devils flying around everywhere, this aspect keeps every enemy around us dazed with ease. When this is combined with concussion as well, nothing can hit us except bosses. And the bosses, they instead get staggered to oblivion. All right, that's the basics. I think we're ready to check out the gear pieces I'm using currently. For helmet, I'm using this piece of shit. Absolutely disgusting, but it gets the job done. Earlier I said that fury per second wouldn't grant us more Dust Devils, so what in the hell is it doing here? Well, by grabbing it on one piece, we are granted unlimited fury for our double swing with ease, allowing us to never run out of fury. 
The cooldown reduction to Steel Grasp is awful, however, and should be cooldown reduction to Challenging Shout. And for Aspect, we're of course using Iron Bloods, allowing us to stack up to 25% damage reduction. Yeah, I agree, that's absolutely bonkers. For the chest, this is basically perfect, but we can get Challenging Shout cooldown reduction instead of Iron Skin here as well. I'm also grabbing armor here, reaching 20,000 armor, which is a bit high, but also kind of based, not giving a shit. Juggernaut is still best in slot, it seems, and it also seemed to have gotten a buff for some reason. As gloves, you've already seen these. New for season four, and they're sick. As pants, we have this piece of shit. Yeah, I'm definitely using Ground Stomp El Mao. Imagine not bricking every single item. For Aspect, however, we're rocking the Iron Warrior Aspect for a whopping 35% damage reduction whenever we use Iron Skin, basically making us unkillable when it's up, and it can stay up near permanently, and as boots we're using this pair, which are pretty decent. Unfortunately, I was forced to roll Poison Resistance here, and we could otherwise have gotten extra movement speed. And oh damn, that would have been yummers. This is the aspect I was talking about earlier, concussive strikes. I will probably be running this on every build using a lot of attack, as it's absolutely broken for a boot aspect, for granting massive amount of crowd control, as well as 20% multiplicative damage. Absolutely bonkers. When it comes to the weapons, there are a bunch of broken stats to use for our dust devils. We're obviously picking max life everywhere, to not fucking die El Mao. But we're also using Fury on Kill for the Dust Devil Madness as well as Strength whenever possible. If you played Barbarian in Season 4, you should also know by now how absolutely busted damage while Berserking has been, granting multiplicative damage via the Blood Rage board. That is no longer the case, however, as it is now capped out at 30%, and we only need to get damage while Berserking on two pieces. Hallelujah, my friends. As Aspects, we're using the three Dust Devil Aspects, and we're also rocking the Ramaladni's Magnum Opus. Interestingly enough, this works with Dust Devils, but Edgemaster's Aspect, for example, doesn't. And both states that skills get the damage bonus, but only one is working with the Dust Devils. So yeah. Anyhow, this thing boosts our damage by 80%, when we have 200 Fury. If we ever find the Tempering Manuals, then we may swap it out, but knowing Blizzard fucking hates me, I probably won't find them in time. For Amulet, I'm using this. I'm pretty satisfied with this one for now. I'm also using Bull Kathos Aspect here, granting us 36% damage reduction, which is massive. And lastly, the Rings. Here we are rolling the typical damage modifiers, but we're also able to get some of that yummy resource generation. This one actually has double greater affixes on it, which is more than we can say of my other god-awful gear. Getting ones with the stats you want seem to be pretty goddamn rare. Finding three greater affixes even more rare. And not bricking the perfect items when tempering seem to be the rarest of them all. Fuck me, am I right? As Aspects, we're rocking the Giant Strides Aspect to get our leap down to zero second cooldown, and also Bold Chieftain's Aspect to reduce the cooldown of our shouts. We can't forget the Weapon Mastery either. Two-handed Axe Expertise still seem to be the way to go as per usual. Great job, friends. Gear and Aspects now done. Let's take a quick look at my highly intellectual skill tree now. Hey, will you look at that basic skills? <laughs> Yeah, fuck that shit. Hell yeah, that's the good stuff. We also have Enhanced Double Swing here, which grants us fury whenever we hit stunned enemies. And since we're using Concussive, there will be a lot of stunned enemies. Fury Heaven, in other words, and we can't forget Furious Double Swing either. This is how we keep up Berserking with this build. By spamming Double Swing, we'll never have to care about Berserking ever again. Now for the bosses, we're using Pressure Point. This is to make sure that vulnerability is up at all times. In the defensive skills, we're grabbing everything LOL. Imposing presence and martial vigor grants us some max life and damage reduction. 
and rallying cry grants us a shit ton of fury. Iron skin grants us a barrier depending on how much health we have lost, so we want to use it while on low health. We're also using enhanced iron skin as to not make the barrier fucking useless. Tough as nails is our main source of bleeding, and challenging shout is used for mad defense. In the brawling skills, we have Warcry for Big Dam. To keep up all shouts as much as possible, we're using booming voice, and we also have guttural yell for yet more damage reduction. Yeah, I think barbarians may need some more damage reduction, guys. It would be extremely unfair if we actually took some damage El Mao. Then we have Leap, as well as Enhanced and Power Leap for some extra Fury Regan, and all of these passives for some damage reduction, Fury Regan, and an easy way to trigger Berserking. In the Weapon Mastery skills, we're only using Pit Fighter. Usually we also run the counter-offensive passive, but we unfortunately need to ditch it for some more defensives. And for the last tree, we have the Ultimates. Tempered Fury grants us a bit of extra max fury for our Ramaladnis, and Invigorating Fury helps us stay alive. From our gear, we also get Concussive Ranks, which helps us with the crowd control. And lastly, the key passive. As it's the Dust Devils dealing the damage and not us, the only option here is Unconstrained, granting us an extra 75% multiplicative damage. Well, damn son, that's the skill tree done. It's now time to check out the Paragons that we're rocking. But first, subscribe, goddammit. Yeah, do it. I'm waiting. All right, in the starting board, we're using the Martial Glyph, nerfed to shit in Season 4 but it's still absolutely mad, allowing us to keep down the cooldown of Iron Skin. After that, we're heading into the Warbringer board, picking up the Legendary Node as our source of Fortify, and socketing Wrath for the Big Dam as well as Fury Generation. We then go to the Blood Rage board and grab the Legendary Node. We're trying to hit the 30% cap here, and we're almost there from just two gear pieces. We're also socketing Exploit here to easily trigger Vulnerability. After that, we head on over to the Carnage board. In an ideal world, I'd have the Legendary node here, but life is a bitch, and so is getting this node, so we're ignoring that and socketing Twister instead. The scaling of this thing is absolutely disgustingly high, and the additional bonus is also bonkers. We then have the Decimator board and its legendary node, which is great. Getting overpowers are real inconsistent, but we still benefit from a permanent 10% damage increase. We also socket Rumble here, and this one is extremely important. This is also one of the reasons we want as much crowd control as possible. By stacking Earthquakes, we are granted 10 multiplicative damage per Earthquake. By spamming our leaps, we manage to get at least 40% extra damage reliably. And lastly, we have the Weapon Mastery Board. We're only picking this for the Legendary Node, as it's an easy way to gain Fury whenever we swap between our Leap and Double Swing ability. To use this node, you just need to make sure that Leap is set to your Big Hammer or Two-Hander, but that's usually what it's set to naturally. Great job so far, friends. Only some gameplay left so you can get good. Let's start with the basic rotation. As sacrifice, we have this Jason Voorhees looking motherfucker. Yeah, time to die. But first, a friendly setting tip. Swap your settings so that your double swing is the same as your hold position, like this. What this allows us to spam double swing with ease as we're running around not being forced to hit our hold position key every goddamn time. Then the rotation is quite simple. I'm spamming leap as hard as possible while holding down double swing. This allows us to keep as many earthquakes up as possible as well as generating a shit ton of fury as we're swapping weapons every attack. War cry and rallying cry should be used on cooldown to make big damn. And iron skin, as well as challenging shout, is for defense mainly. 
You can, however, use Challenging Shout for Big Dam as well, as it spawns tornadoes for us as well as stagger bosses. Well, that's all for me. Hopefully the build doesn't get nerfed to shit. But if it does, expect some other insane builds on the channel. Until next time, stay Shredded Legends.